So far we've covered how artists use color in their work to manipulate things such as spirituality, emotions, depth, and we've also gone over some watercolor practices, how to use watercolors to show things such as textures and depth um, using washes and patterns and things like that. So now we need to create something and using warm and cool colors, I want you to get a feel for how you can show an object and give it depth using warm colors for the highlights and cool colors for the shadows. I've asked my friend Paul to speak to how he uses warm and cool colors in his work. He's an oil painter, but I think it would still be helpful for you to listen to what he does with color and apply that to your watercolor studies. Hi, I'm Paul Schulenberg. I'm an artist. I live in East Ham, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. And um, I'm a full-time painter, work in oils. I show my work at Edison Art Gallery. So I've been asked to talk about cool and warm colors, um, which is a fun topic. I, I uh, pulled out this recent painting of a fisherman. I do a lot of paintings of fishermen on Cape Cod. Um, now this, this might be a good example of, uh, we have warm sunlight um, hitting this figure and the cool shadows. So rather than just going to, um, to a gray, blues and purples, it's a, you know, darker colors, but there's um, a lot of color in the shadows and they are um, cool colors. And uh, there's a nice warm sunlight hitting the figure here. Um, it just picks up these oranges and yellows and, and reds. Um, so um, in this case, we have, you know, warm sunlight and cool shadows. In other paintings you have, um, say if you're doing a painting by north light, like a north light window, the rule is that the highlights are cool and then the shadows are warm. So we'll look at one of, uh, an example of that. Now here's a three hour uh, practice study, a portrait of a man. And he was sitting in a, in a, a room with uh, light coming from a window this way. It could have been a north light window. North light is uh, much cooler than uh, like a south light window. Um, I think it may have been an overcast day on Cape Cod. So um, you could see the cool highlights on his skin tones here. There's some warm, warmer tones in the lips and the nose where there's some color of his skin, but the highlights are cooler um, than these, the medium tones where they pick up some pinks and reds. And then you go to uh, these warmer tones in the shadow rather than a, a cool shadow. Getting away from figures and portraits for a minute, I decided to pull up this landscape. Recent landscape, I did a first encounter beach in East Ham. Um, to show uh, that we have a sunset situation over here. So sunsets give you a very warm light that is reflected in the grasses here. So, so the, really the, the bright hot spots are in this grasses as the, look, there's warm light is reflected on there. Whereas um, the sky is cooler. The sky is cooler on this side and basically gets warmer towards the sunset, of course. Um, so there's an example of a warm and cool colors in a landscape painting. And finally, this is uh, a painting of my wife in a restaurant in Provincetown called Cafe Heaven. Um, and I picked this one because uh, you have a nice warm light coming through a, a window. You have lar very large windows in the front of the building, so you have this nice high streak of sunlight coming in from up above and then diagonally down towards the figure. Um, yellows here and warm su sunlight um, going to the, the cool shadows. This, uh, this sunlight is, has some yellow in it, but it's a, kind of a blue. With a, the paint on the wall is a cooler color. So um, this is really kind of a cool blue with a little bit of yellow stri streaks added in. Um, but overall, it looks warmer than this shadow area with purples and blues. Um, this whole area down here is, is cool gray and blue, um, a little purple. Well, that's a very short talk about warm and cool colors. I hope that uh, clears a few things up. Um, thank you for inviting me to participate. Thank you, Jane Baker, and to all your students out there. Uh, get lots of work done. Um, it's a good time to try new things and uh, experiment and play with your artwork. So um, happy painting.
So now that you have more of an understanding of warm versus cool colors and how they can influence your work, I'd like you to start your own still life uh, in watercolors. So using your watercolor supplies, you need to pick an object which is complicated enough to challenge you. Um, here are some examples of what other people have done for this project in class for art two. And I'm gonna demo a quick study of just a little daffodil in a glass to show you how you might go about doing this project. To begin your still life, you wanna lightly block out the major shapes. Use your pencil to measure your angles and just double check. So I began the daffodil by blocking in the yellows, layering, always layering in watercolor. You never want to put down too much at once. Then the stem. Now my stem is not just one green, it's a few different greens. Some browns, I want to capture that. And because it's in a clear glass, I want to show that the light's refracted, so I want to break up the stem. You never want to paint it straight down. So I'm adding darker greens on the left of the stem, yellower greens on the right where the highlights are coming from, and now I'm adding some tones into the daffodil. You want to use the white of the paper for the brightest highlights. That's the trick with watercolor. You always want to use the white of the paper for your whites, or at least strive to do that. Layering blue for the glass. It's a clear glass, but I want to show it as a cool color, so I've chosen a blue purple in the shadows of the daffodil because purple is the opposite of yellow and that helps it pop the most. So layering, more layering. Textures on the flower petals themselves. You always want to squint at what you're doing, especially when you're painting glass. You really want to squint at it so you can see what's dark, what's light, what's catching the light. You want to give the impression of glass that way. So this is just a very, very brief, very quick study of the daffodil in watercolor. Good luck.